Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good afternoon, and welcome to a bit of Fallout New Vegas Tales to Wastelands. A bit different here with the green screen and all that sort of thing. Uh, yes, finally managed to wrangle OBS a little bit. So, let's talk about what we're going to be doing next. First of all, uh, a bit of an introduction. Uh, I played Fallout 3 Tale of Two Wastelands, a mod that allows you to play your same character from New Vegas in Fallout 3 and vice versa. Uh, with like a three year gap between the two, I think. I'm not entirely sure how it all works. Um, so yeah, so I played Fallout 3. I strongly recommend watching that, it is very selfish of me to say, you know, oh by the way you've got to watch 20 parts of that, which is amounts to like 40 hours minimum. Uh, you know, so... I can understand if you're a bit reluctant to watch those. However, for historical purposes, Fallout 3 is a very different game to New Vegas in terms of its style and theme and tone, uh, given that as well as made by different people. But we will get into the game now. So I'm going to be taking my cur uh, not my courier, my Vault Dweller, my Lone Survivor from Fallout 3, level 47, uh, Good Karma, Jane Napier. Oh, we played 80 hours with this character. Uh, yeah, so approximately, so uh, yeah. I'm going to put them on this train here to the Mojave Wasteland. Bit of an introduction to this character, if you want to skip ahead, please do. Uh, my character was born to James and Catherine. Uh, Catherine, who sadly passed away uh, in a sort of underground area where we were uh, working on where they were working on Project Purity, an idea of bringing clean water to the capital wasteland of Washington, D.C., or what was formerly known as Washington, D.C. Um, my character had left the vault, seeking the wayward father, and had, along the way, met lots of interesting people, such as those who lived around a city called Megaton, which was uh, built around a Megaton bomb. Um, we had also met the uh, hoity-toity residents of uh, Tempany Tower and killed them. Um, oh well, helped the ghouls move in and kill them. Um, we have met the super mutants of the wasteland, um, hanging around I think Vault 87. Uh, we have gone to Rivet City, a city that takes place entirely on a boat. And uh, we've also met a number of factions, including the Brotherhood of Steel, who are rather benevolent in Fallout 3, um, uh, which has caused uh, no small amount of casualties in a civil war. And we've also met the Enclave as well, who are back from Fallout 2 to stir havoc with their great, with their significantly great technology. We've brought clean water to the wasteland. It's a very slow and arduous process. We've avenged our father, and we've carried out his life's work. So, we've basically completed everything there is to be done here in the capital wasteland. So now, we're going to be going into the Mojave, going all the way to Vegas. So I am carrying a little bit less gear. I've got my ghoul mask, I've got my doctor's fatigues, I've got my anti-material rifle there, as you can see. The ghoul mask was meant... I wasn't really meant to reveal that, uh, just right now. Uh, that was meant to be something like, oh yeah, by the way, I've just been shot in the head and I've got some surgery and this is what I now look like. Uh, and we'll just sort of fix that through roleplay, but I hope we'll just pretend that that's not going to happen anymore. So, uh, yes, this is Jane Napier here. A bit more on her wrist, and uh, yeah, we're gonna go straight on ahead to this train. So, in order to get here uh, on this train, you have to actually install the DLC to uh, tell to Wastelands for the Columbus Circle. So, you go all the way through here and eventually end up here. A bit of a pain, uh, but hey ho, let's have a look at this train. It is a very impressive that the modders have actually gone out of their way to do this. I imagine this is like safe storage. We also have the dining car here at the back as well. So we can uh, sit. Look at our character in the ghoul mask. Hmm. Right down to the cataracts as well. Hmm. Oh, by the way, let, let's show Jane off. 
Would you believe she's only got two charisma? I better show you the build actually. So this is our stats. The reason why I've gone for stats this low is essentially for the um, uh, almost perfect perk. I have raised the level cap to 98 because after 99 it crashes. We've got lots of little perks here. Um, from all the DLCs of Fallout 3 because we haven't just had a lot of adventures on Earth, we've also had adventures off Earth as well. Yeah, like I, I'm genuinely impressed by the uh, by the modders for for this. They've just made it so easy to justify how you get into Mojave, and they make you work for it. And they do actually say, you know, be careful because you know the super mutants and whatnot. So, yeah, I've lightened the load considerably, as you will be able to tell here. Uh, carrying 113 pounds out upon 335. Got plenty of caps. Uh, I've taken off my power armor, figured I'd make it there. I've also got my Chinese stealth armor as well. Yeah. Radiation suit just in case, and the ghoul mask. But just in goals. These are the weapons I'm taking. Not much. Got a laser rifle, silence pistol, grenades, plasma for flesh, pulse for robots, plasma defender, plasma so plasma pistol. Got a shovel, because that's gonna be handy. A chainsaw and the anti-material rifle, that's like my typical uh, anti-material rifle, which is my sniper rifle. I have bullets for it. So This train leads to New Vegas. Your ticket is one way and you will not be able to return without purchasing another ticket. Are you sure you wish to travel to New Vegas? Now if we do this, we have to go all the way to Freeside to get our ticket home. So we've got to be very careful with this. So, I'm ready. I'll let you watch the intro to New Vegas as well. changes. When atomic fire consumed the earth, those who survived did so in great underground vaults. When they opened, their inhabitants set out across the ruins of the old world to build new societies, establishing villages, forming tribes. As decades passed, what had been the American Southwest united beneath the flag of the new California Republic, dedicated to old world values of democracy and the rule of law. As the Republic grew, so did its needs. Scouts spread east, seeking territory and wealth in the dry and merciless expanse of the Mojave Desert. They returned with tales of a city untouched by the warheads that had scorched the rest of the world and a great wall spanning the Colorado River. The NCR mobilized its army and sent it east to occupy Hoover Dam and restore it to working condition. 
But across the Colorado, another society had arisen under a different flag. A vast army of slaves forged from the conquest of 86 tribes, Caesar's Legion. Four years have passed since the Republic held the dam, just barely, against the Legion's onslaught. The Legion did not retreat. Across the river, it gathers strength. Campfires burn, training drums beat. Through it all, the New Vegas Strip has stayed open for business, under the control of its mysterious overseer, Mr. House, and his army of rehabilitated tribals and police robots. You are a courier, hired by the Mojave Express to deliver a package to the New Vegas Strip. What seemed like a simple delivery job has taken a turn for the worse. You got what you were after, so pay up. You're crying in the rain, Pally. <laughs> Guess who's waking up over here? Time to cash out. Will you get it over with? Maybe cons kill people without looking them in the face. But I ain't a fink, dig? You've made your last delivery, kid. Sorry you got twisted up in this scene. From where you're kneeling must seem like an 18-carat run of bad luck. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. Obsidian Entertainment production is a very important note because that is the developers, not Bethesda Game Studios, but the makers or the, some of the people behind um, Fallout 1 and 2. Obsidian consists of members of Black Isle Studios and Troika Games, who split off from Interplay and eventually reunited to make the studio is today. How about your name? Can you tell me your name? We're gonna stick with Chain Napier. Huh. You can't say it's what I'd have picked for you, but if that's your name, that's your name. I'm Doc Mitchell. Welcome to Good Springs. Now, I hope you don't mind, but I had to go rooting around there in your noggin to pull all the bits of lead out. I take pride in my needlework, but you'd better tell me if I left anything out of place. How'd I do? So, laser graft, a skin resurfacing unit. So we can choose to keep our face, I think we will. Although maybe a uh, time in the wasteland is age to of that. Well, I got most of it right anyway. Stuff that matters. Okay. No sense keeping you in bed anymore. Let's see if we can get you on your feet. Good. Why don't you walk down to the end of the room? Over by that bigger tester machine there. Take it slow now. It ain't a race. So this is how you'd start... ...ball out New Vegas. So that's the... Character creation. This is the other one. Looking good so far. Go ahead and give the vigor tester a try. We'll learn right quick if you get back all your faculties. So this is the special. Look at that. Maybe them bullets done your brain some good. All right, I guess that about does it. Come with me. I'll see you. So normally you come up with the screen and basically you'd rate from one to ten your special attributes. And uh, Doc would comment on whether, you know, if it was above five, if it's isn't good and one not. So, yeah. 
normally you'd sit here and do a bit of a um what is it called now? Like a Rorschach test sort of thing. Um as well as just like a psychiatric profile. Like a questionnaire, like the uh, the goat. Uh the general occupational aptitude test. So yeah. And it also can be a pit wire as well. Which I can't turn on at the moment or use, so here, these are yours. Was all you had on you when you was brought in. I hope you don't mind, but I gave the note a look. I thought it might help me find a next of kin, but it was just something about a platinum chip. I don't mention it. It's what I'm here for. You should talk to Sunny Smiles before you leave town. She can help you learn to fend for yourself in the desert. She'll likely be at the saloon. I reckon some of the other folks at the saloon might be able to help you out, too. And the metal fella, Victor, who pulled you out of your grave. Anyway, you ever get hurt out there, you come right back. I'll fix you up. But try not to get killed anymore. <laughs> so we're gonna put my... The doc would normally give you his. Uh... Some clothes on. Why I've got that in my inventory, I have no idea. So, oh yeah, and the... Uh, that whole thing about, you know, the Explorer perk also applies to the Wasteland. So every single location in the map is uncovered. Great! <laughs> Now, for some reason, it's saying I'm at Union Station. And I need to be here in Good Springs, but I already am in Good Springs. At least, I think I am. Okay, so I'm just getting some DLC notices. Blinding lights. Okay, we don't need to see all these messages, don't worry. What the fuck? Gunrunner's arsenal, okay. Does that mean I get some stuff to start with? I'm not sure. I just wait a second. It should learn. Okay, all's looking well so far. How's the audio? Let's check real quick. Yep. So this is Good Springs, the starter town. Now our objective is quite simply at the beginning of the game to go from uh, this little town here of Good Springs to New Vegas. So just this big patch of land here. Now we could just follow this road here. But that's not a very good idea. I'm going to show you for why now. Now bear in mind that I am level 47, so that's not that much of a problem. But, uh, yeah, down that way, if you're familiar with Fallout, th Fallout are Death Claws, and down this way are a new enemy, at least I think they're brand new to the series, anyway, called Cazadors, or Cazadors. Cazadors are horrible little bastards. But yeah. Got stop signs there, you got this here, saying so keep out. Invisible walls, you can just carry on. So, you know, whatever. I've seen this before. That just applies to NPCs, right? It's not players. Let's carry on. So, yeah, you can just walk down this way. All the way to Vegas. A level one. How very Morrowind. Oh, picked up some monsters. Right, that's how much damage that I'm doing to them at the moment. But if I were level one, I'd be a goner. Yeah. I'm probably not selling you on the castle at all. But yeah, they're evil, horrible things. 
Now, of course, if you don't like me playing at this level, um, you know, I, I probably will play this game again at some stage anyway on the channel, so I might not set boards. Um, it's Mojave Express, so we have the Pony Express before, and this is the Mojave Express, so I can drop off items. So I can't take them to the old world, unfortunately, but yeah. You know, we'll talk to Victor first. I just want to go up there. And let's talk to Victor. Howdy, partner! Might I say you're looking fit as a fiddle? Don't mention it. I'm always ready to lend a helping hand to a stranger in need. I was out for a stroll that night when I heard the commotion up the old bone orchard. Saw what looked like a bunch of bad eggs, so I laid low. Once they'd run off, I dug you up to see if you were still kicking. Turns out you were. So I hauled you off to the dock right quick. Can't say that I'm familiar with the rascals. Some of the fine folks in town might be able to help you out with that. I moseyed into town, oh, 10, 15 years ago. Before that, I... Um, I can't quite seem to recall. Odd. Anyway. It's a right peaceful town, and I reckon it's as fine a place to settle as any. I'm a Securitron. Robco Security Model 2060B. If you ever see any of my brothers, tell them Victor says howdy. <laughs> Happy trails! So the, Securit so the Securitrons are a more advanced model of, like, Protectron. As you can see, they have one wheel, they have, like, uh grubber claws um build bulky bodies these sort of shoulders if you can call them such um actually are a weapons platform they have missile launchers within them but well that requires a certain upgrade So this is the place that we were shot. No blue flyers yet. Six so we've got the shovel, we can open up these graves. I believe there's gonna be some clues as well. So this is where we were. We were shot. Hello? Distinctive cigarette butt. Hmm. That's a clue. Maybe we can ask around town who might smoke those things. So that's our destination over there. And that big ah, oh, there's the Lucky Thirty Eight, biggest and baddest casino in all of the Mojave. And here's Snow Globe. Good springers. I'd like to find all of them because they're worth like 2,000 caps each. Because the NPC who can buy them has a somewhat limited lifespan. In terms of the story. I don't think there was any more clues here. Because I know as you go to each major location, you might find clues as to where this person was. Or proof that they were involved there. So yeah, this is Good Springs. Nice little humble town. Humble people, good folk. Oh, and here we have a new beastie. 
This is a young big horner. Yeah, that's a young one. That's, you might be able to guess they're called big horners because they have large hooves. Also as well in uh, New Vegas, we don't just get, uh, ah, hmm, I was going to say we don't just get karma, we also get reputation. I don't know how to unlock that screen yet, if it even appears here. Oh, also as well, the hood is normally orange instead of green, so, I guess that well, here's easy to beat. Howdy. What can Easy Pete do for you? The one in the fancy suit seemed to be calling the shots. That's as much as I know. Other folks in town might know more. Word of advice, though. If you ever catch up with him, watch out. The man's got cold eyes like a snake. Can't be trusted, I'd say. Was a prospector until I decided to settle here to get away from the NCR. Now, we'll just take it easy and help out with the Brahmin and Bighorners. Nah, nah. Means I poke through old buildings looking for working tech and such. Some folks just call it salvaging, but never like the term. The way I see it, salvage means it's broken, near worthless. Me, I look for the good stuff. Guns, chems, spare parts. Good money in it. Nope. Had a pretty good claim once, way out east by the river, but got run off by raiders. Eventually got too old to keep going out. Don't get me wrong, the NCR's got a lot of decent folk in it. It's just that they make you part of them whether you like it or not. Towns like Good Springs and Prim don't stay independent for long, not if you've got something the NCR wants. Still, the NCR keeps the Legion away. They're slavers, led by a guy named Caesar, or Kaisar. Not sure how you're supposed to say it. A couple of years ago, they tried to take over Hoover Dam, but the NCR beat them back. The NCR didn't or couldn't finish the job, though. The Legion's got its strength back and is getting ready for another round at the dam. My money's still on the NCR winning, but you never know. We've been hearing stories about legionaries on the Nevada side of the river, so keep a gun handy. You don't want to get caught by them. The dam powers a lot of New Vegas, and then there's all that clean water lying in Lake Mead, too. Anybody who owns the dam owns the territory. Meat and hide, mostly. Can't put a pack on them. They just lay down until you take it off. Can find a bunch of wild ones high up in the hills, but gotta be careful around them. They can put up a decent fight if cornered. They are quite tough. Like, they've got a lot of health. And health in this game, at least for them, means meat points. The machine? Harmless. No matter what Trudy says. She thinks it's hiding something, but I think it's just a broken down relic with no place to be. Keep your gun handy if you go poking around some of the abandoned places around here, like the schoolhouse. Critters move in there sometimes. Cheyenne, stay. Don't worry, she won't bite unless I tell her to. Yeah, I guess there's a thing or two I could show you. Sounds like you need all the help you can get after what they done to you. Meet me outside, behind the saloon. So what I'm doing is I'm nicking bottles of something called Sunset Sarsaparilla. Which is a... Zesty drink. Ah. 
And sometimes when you drink Sunset Sarsaparilla, Sarsaparilla, you get a special bottle cap. If I just find it here, the star bottle cap. And it's a quest item, so it's nothing. It's very important we hold on to that. We find as many as we can. Mitchell sure knows his stuff, doesn't he? Let's go to the back of the Now, see the sarsaparilla bottles on the fence there? Take this and try to hit a couple of them. The vomit rifle. That's the right idea. Try crouching down and staying. Nice shot. Well, that's a start. But I don't reckon you came to me to learn to fight sarsaparilla bottles. Tell you what. I gotta go chase geckos away from our water supply anyway. Darn critters are attracted to it. Why don't you come along? Follow me. It's just down to the southeast a short ways. Yeah, the vomit rifle's a pretty good starter weapon. Um... Bolt action, so you're not getting too many shots off too quickly. This was also aim down sights as well, you had to actually have working aim down sights. So you got a clear picture. Quite a nice range on it, like if you've got a high sneak skill and you can see the enemy ahead of you, you can do a fair bit of sneak damage to it. Now the thing is, is that with the tutorial here, is that characters can die, Shang can die, Sunny Smiles can die, a friendly NPC can die, but you can keep everyone alive if you, you know, keep your shit together. Hear that up on the ridge behind me there? We got some geckos to clear out. Bunch of little monsters is what they are. Seems like Doc Mitchell treats more gecko bites than anything else. Let's see if we can get a little closer. If we move quietly, we can get the jump on them. More likely to hit something vital that way. So that's taught you about sink attacks. Okay, you're on. Go give them hell. Getting the hang of it. There's two more wells that still need clearing. You want, you can come along. Shouldn't take more than a couple minutes, especially with two of us. Come with me. Yeah, it's like it. Like the ammunition you get, uh, 22 LR is not great. Um, especially like the silence 22 pistol. It's not a very good silence weapon. Like the lit. Literally the only benefit of it is that it's silenced. But, uh... Yeah, it's not bad for a... Starter weapon. So part of this is like you can actually save that woman um, if you don't dick around. So yeah, but I think I just accidentally shot her. 
So we'll quickly just get through this. Yeah, so she'll go back to the settlement. So. Oh, no, she's found one more to fight, never mind. like you done I'd be a goner for sure I came up here to draw water but here you should have what I got you look thirsty now oh, there we are reputation so different to karma we, we still have karma for Land of Vegas now there's a thing called um reputation Reputation allows you to um, um, like grants you different benefits, and like each of the things interacts with each other. Ah, reputation press R. So with good springs, I'm accepted. So like the higher your reputation, the better deals you get, and um, the uh, more politely people talk to you. People give you stuff for free, and they won't attack you on sight and things like that. But if you have a low reputation, if you're vilified, then people might automatically attack you on sight. Now that was some good work. Even got a little exciting there at the end. Here's a little spending money for the trouble. One more thing I wanted to show you. Thought I might teach you about living off the land and making useful things for yourself. Interested? All right then. We'll need a couple ingredients to get started. Gonna want some Xander root and a Brock flower. Let me think now. I know I've seen Brock flowers growing up at the graveyard, and I seem to remember there being Xander root over by the schoolhouse. Bring those on back to me, and we'll get cooking. Excuse me one second. Right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Let's. Hold on. Oh, yeah, these are the geckos. Ferocious little bastards. So, uh, in New Vegas, the survival skill was introduced, which is most effective in the hardcore mode of the game, which I think you can only activate at the beginning. So what I'm doing now is I'm looking for some plants. There would ordinarily be these ones, but for some reason I can't pick them up, so never mind. We'll go up here. Let's follow the instructions, shall we? Mm, clean water. Nice. Quite the luxury. Now, it's a shame that we don't have the wild wasteland equipped. I don't think we can turn that on. Uh, wild wasteland basically adds a lot of pop culture references. 
So, for example, you might find a fridge over there with a skeleton in it. If you don't know what that's a reference to, it'll be... Um, oh, and a hat as well, pre-war hat. Uh, that's a reference to Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. So, yeah. But yeah, um, it's just lots of Monty Python stuff. But the Hell's Crannies as well, God, I hope we get to see that soon. But uh, no worries if not, because hey, playing this game from scratch would not bother me at all. Another pest enemy, oh, pest enemy along the lines of a blowfly. Two jalapenos. There were supposed to be some plants here. You're fat. That's a scavenge. Terminal tool not the safe. We can open it, but either way. So this sort of holds got a programmer's digest magazine to help boost our hacking ability temporarily. Whoa! Okay, I don't realize that happened. Uh, not something you want to come across, is it? My god, that was actually rather scary. So yeah, there's actually not much in here, but you get enough loot to get an idea of, like, what what are these buildings is like and they're full of. There's Victor in front of a shack. Let's look inside. The thing about Victor's place is most of the stuff here you can take, it's not theft. So that makes some of the things you find in here quite handy. The weapon repair kit is basically like the best thing in here. So. So anyway, let's uh, carry on with getting our survival gear. So yeah, so the idea of like survival is that you can... Ah, this is the sander route. This is what I was thinking of. All the other stuff, my apologies. And yeah, so... Um... I 
it's used to like make food and things like that. Howdy. So yeah. So a bit of story behind Fallout New Vegas. Fallout New Vegas was made uh, in about 18 months, um, which is not a long time in game dev. However, Obsidian did have a lot of the work sort of done for them already, a lot of these assets. So assets, things like these rocks, these textures, uh, trees, the houses, uh, a lot of this stuff, that water tower, that, all that stuff was sort of made for them already in... Red scorpion deserves no less. It's a bark scorpion. One more common red scorpions of the, the wasteland. Why am I wasting BMG rounds on this? This is the final round. Right. Turn the wings off. So yeah, so it's made by Obsidian Entertainment, and um, they had like 18 months to make the game, and uh, it's the lead designer was like Josh Sawyer, who I would call, I've said this before on Fallout 3, I think, that like, Josh Sawyer is like a method game designer, where he really gets into the things he wants to do. Like, he became like a gun nut because of this game. And, because uh, he was like testing out the weapons and how they should feel, how he would reload them. Um, you know, what kind of ammunition would be available for them and what he should do to a target. Um, yeah, they really went out and tried to understand uh, the world that they were making a game about. And, uh, yeah, making it for them. Um, Bethesda Game Studios, um, their parent company being Zenimax, had told, um, Obsidian that if their game gets an 85 on Metacritic, a review aggregate score site, so Metacritic doesn't review games itself, they just collect reviews. Um, and I think a somewhat flawed way, but that's not composition for another day. If they got an 85 on Metacritic, um, they would get a bonus. And Obsidian Entertainment's released this game to a um, to a very positive crowd, but only got 84 on Metacritic. They were one point off from getting their bonus. A bonus that was absolutely necessary for them to make their own game. So they were quite disappointed with this, especially when Obsidian have been struggling for a lot of years to try and like keep the studio afloat and uh, like continue making the games that they're good at. Um, so that's just that's actually kind of what pushed them to go into Kickstarter and uh, release one of the most one of the earliest examples of a successful video game Kickstarter with Pillars of Eternity. Let me see what you got. Yeah, these will do just fine. Just fine. All right, now. We're going to be making something folks on the trail call healing powder. Go on over to that campfire now. Give it a try. It's the higher your survival skill, the more potent your healing powder is. Ooh, rushing water. Make one of those. Make some Gecko State. I'll make some rushing water. Hey, that's not bad, see? All it takes to make a recipe is the right ingredients and the right know-how. 
Sometimes it won't be a campfire you need. Might need to do some work on your guns and ammo, maybe. Important thing to get is it's all the same idea. You just need to find the right place to set up shop. Workbench or reloading bench, whatever. Well, I hope that's enough to get you started. I'm heading back now. Hope I didn't miss anything good on the jukebox. Cheyenne would never forgive me. Hey, do me a favor. Trudy, she's the bartender up at the Prospector. Kind of the town mom. She likes to meet newcomers. She'd be cross with me if I didn't ask you to poke your head in and say hi. No, no don't do that. So, uh... So I... And, uh, Pillow of Saturn, because I was actually thinking about that earlier, I thought... I might actually play as like, a bit of a casual game, and I realised that, well, I've got to do balls again first. So, yeah. Because I played Pillars of Eternity, I thought... Like, I liked it, but... In fact, no, I tell a lie. I, like, Obsidian is one of my favourite studios. And I'm, I'm more than happy criticising them. I really am. I don't mind pointing out some of the flaws. Like, for example, their, ab their inability to get better contract negotiation and things like that. Uh, um, you know, they are the common problem of all the games. Like, like Fallout New Vegas was horribly buggy at, at launch. I'm not going to say, oh, it's just the creation engine. It's not. It is absolutely Obsidian as well as this, because it applies to all their other games as well. Obsidian do make some buggy stuff, and they're not very good at asking for more time on games. Um, it's why, when they had things like Pal Pillars of Eternity, that they could set their own limits. They knew what they wanted to do, and they knew how they were going to do it. So, yeah. Sorry, let me just move that all the way down the way. Mr. Easy. So, yeah. But, um... Yeah. I'm done being nice. If you don't hand Ringo over soon, I'm going to get my friends and we're burning this town to the ground. Got it? We'll keep that in mind. Now, if you're not going to buy something, get out. What do you want? He's some trader who decided he'd rather shoot than pay the toll for being in our territory. He's hiding somewhere in town. Would serve these idiots right if me and my guys shot the place up after we got payback on Ringo. It is now. Me and the rest of the guys busted out of the NCR prison east of here and took over. Now we're calling the shots. None of your damn business. You ought to know better than to ask a man that kind of question. Robbed some people, burned some things, killed a few guys. So you may have noticed that that speech check wasn't based on a percentage, it was based on my you know, my skill in that, in that, well, skill. So if I had 21 skill, I'd succeed at a check of 20. All you got to do is just meet or exceed the number of your own skill. Pretty good. There are debates as to whether, you know, percentile or, you know, just flat out meeting the criteria is better or not. I personally prefer this approach, but it does mean that, like, if you don't have that number, no matter what, that you don't even have a chance, you will just automatically fail. So, yeah. Same old shit that's been going on for years. The NCR and Legion are still fighting over Hoover Dam for some reason. Never been there since the NCR has got troops all over it. Must be pretty important. I've run with some tough gangs, but I gotta admit, they all got nothing on the Legion. I hear they stick you up on poles and it takes a while to die. I ain't saying I'm afraid of them or nothing, but I'll be staying out of their way. New California Republic. Nothing new about it. Just a bunch of people with money and power pushing everyone else around. They've got troops all over the Mojave, but it's a big desert, so it's pretty easy to avoid them if you want. Yeah. So that's an escape prisoner. Well, I say that. Why would you want to escape the prison? Even. Have you seen that place? Well, you've been causing quite a stir. Glad I finally got to meet you. Welcome to the Prospector Saloon. Looks like our little town got itself dragged in the middle of something we don't want anything to do with. About a week ago, this trader, Ringo, comes into town. Survivor of an attack, he says. 
bad men after him. Needs a place to hide. We figured he was just in shock, so we gave him a place to lie low. We didn't actually expect anyone to come after him. He's holed up at the abandoned gas station up the hill. You mean murder him? That's not our way. Even if Cobb is scum, he can bluster and threaten all he wants. Some of the others, like Sonny, will probably stand up for Ringo if he asks for help, which he hasn't. Personally, I hope he sneaks out of town one night and takes the powder gangers with him. Chang gangs, really. The NCR brought them in from California to work on the rail lines. Problem is, it turns out that giving convicts a bunch of dynamite and blasting powder isn't the best idea. It was a big escape not too long ago. Some of them stuck together so they could make trouble. That's what we're dealing with now. All right. If you were able to get Ringo out of this mess, you'd have a decent reputation around Good Springs. I'd even set you up with a discount. Of course, helping Ringo would also make the powder gangers mad. And they've got a lot of friends out there. Don't know why you'd want to do a thing like that. Yep, you'd get on their good side, but people around here wouldn't appreciate it one bit. He's a convict, just without the chains. Said his name was Cobb. Powder gangers is what they call themselves. Plenty more like him out there. Not much, other than they're a bunch of freeloaders who expected a few rounds on the house. I was able to get them to pay up, though. Of course, one of the great cons did knock my radio to the floor by accident, and it hasn't been working since. They were having some kind of argument about it, but the guy in the checkered coat kept shushing them. It sounded like they came in from the north through Quarry Junction. If that's the case, I can't say I blame them for not wanting to go back. That whole area is overrun with the kind of critters that just get mad if you shoot them. Merchants avoid that whole stretch of I-15 like it's radioactive, which it could be for all I know. I didn't hear exactly, but the leader was talking about the strip. Fellow wants to get there and avoid the 15, he'd have to go east. Take Highway 93 up. Sure, the outside looks okay, but I think something broke on the inside. There'd be caps in it for you. I do like to hear what's going on in the world. And that Mr. New Vegas seems like such a gentleman. I know that thing as much as anyone else around here. It mostly keeps to itself, which is just fine by me. Other than rolling around once in a while, it doesn't do anything useful as far as I can tell. I don't know why it took an interest in you, but I'd be careful. It's never helped anyone before. It acts friendly enough, but I don't trust that whole cheerful cowboy act. I find it all very creepy. It was here when I took over the saloon seven years ago. Some people have said its owner lived here, but no one knows who it was. Fine by me. Mostly traders looking to buy bighorn or meat and hides. The traders are the main reason the general store manages to stay in business. Most travelers heading south on the I-15 just push on towards Prim, unless they're in desperate need of supplies. There's always something interesting going on, but the biggest news has to be the coming dust-up between the NCR and the Legion over the dam. Slavers, killers, and all other kinds of trouble. They dress up like Roman soldiers, so there's no mistake in it when you see them. The rumor is, is that the Legion is far larger than the NCR lets on, and that it's been due to luck that the Legion hasn't overrun the territory. The New California Republic's got the most power in Nevada. Money, troops, you name it. They do what they can to keep things safe in the region. But if you ask me, they're trying to do too much. They're spread too thin. The Vault Dweller and the Chosen One help form the NCR in Shady Springs and uh, yeah, cause it to become a basically the I guess the post nuclear equivalent of a superpower um, right up there with the Brotherhood of Steel and the Air and uh, the Enclave not quite as powerful but they what they lack in raw power they have in numbers and that kind of becomes a big advantage in the wasteland I'm pretty sure the NCR wants to hold on to the dam because it's one of the few places around that can make electricity. The Legion are a bunch of savages, though. No idea why they'd want the dam. Probably plan on destroying it or something. 
Be careful out there. So, let's rip out the radio. Yep. Feeling thirsty? I can take care of that. Christ, it's only part one. Jesus. Yeah, I heard it turn right back on after you got done tinkering with it. Here's some caps for the work. Part 20, so I don't have to do a percentile check. Percentage check, all I gotta do is just have 20 baht. Not at all. I'm never sure how much is normally charged for this sort of thing. Here's some additional caps. That should be enough. Now, how about spending some of those caps in the saloon? I have caps, not great, but not terrible. Yes, not a niece, excuse me. Nice decor. Dean Domino, King of Swing, we will meet Dean Domino at some stage. Parker. Hey. Wolfred the Wizard. Joe Baxter. Mm. Yeah. You told all these crates because it's free. No messages. Okie dokie. Now, we've got to meet someone up here, who, uh... It's very special to us. Poseidon Energy, another reference to Fallout 1. You have to go to Poseidon Energy, I think, at Fallout... Well, one of them, it's either Fallout 1 or 2. In fact, come to think of it, I think that's where you meet, um... Is that where you meet Harold? Couldn't tell you. Check around the back, anything good here? Okay. That's close enough. Who are you, and what do you want with me? Sorry about the gun. You just caught me off guard, that's all. We got off to a bad start. What say we start over with a friendly game of Caravan? You know how to play? Yeah. He doesn't look very tough, though. I hear he's afraid I'll shoot him down from one of the windows when I see him. And he's right. I'll have a much bigger problem once his friends show up. There's no way I could handle all of them in a gunfight. I'm gonna lay low for as long as I can, assuming the town doesn't throw me to the wolves. I've got no chance against the gang on my own. We just end up sharing the same grave if it's just the two of us. Now, if some of the other people in town were also on board... Start with Sunny Smiles. She's been friendlier than most around here. So that's ring out. And he needs our help. He is on the run from the powder gangers who are chasing him. That Joe Cobb who we missed in the bar. I believe it's part of the Crimson Caravan Trading Company, so. It's a rather par powerful ally to have. I think it's Crimson Caravan, it was Canterbury Commons. I swear. Okay. Well, in Vegas also introduced a game So what's going Caravan. on? Did Sonny agree to help us? Okay. We'll worry about caravan later. But yeah. Basically the idea is that you uh Well, I don't actually know to be honest. 
I, I've tried to, to figure it out. I will probably let him play a bit. But yeah. It's like it's a friendly game that lots of people in the wasteland like to play. Hi there. Sticking around Good Springs for a while longer? Say no more. I'm in. Joe Cobb talks about leaving us alone if we hand over Ringo, but I know his type. He and his friends will come after the town eventually. However, between you, me, and Ringo, we aren't exactly a force to be reckoned with. A lot of people around here look up to Trudy. If you could convince Trudy to join us, some of the folks in town might decide to help out as well. I know Easy Pete's got a stock of dynamite somewhere, and Chet just got a shipment of leather armor we could borrow. Talk to them as well. Finally, there's a good chance we'll all end up with extra holes in us. So if Doc Mitchell could cough up some extra stim packs, that'd be great. A silver tongue would help. Convincing Trudy that we had a good plan to win the fight would also help. I don't think give is in Chet's vocabulary. Even with the town at stake, he'd still make you barter with him. Easy Pete's pretty protective of his dynamite. You'd have to convince him you know a thing or two about explosives before you handed it over. Sure can. Take the road southeast out of town till it hits the freeway. Prim is the town with a roller coaster straight south. Can't miss it. NCR patrols do a good job of keeping the highway clear, but I'd keep your gun where you can reach it easily. You never know who you'll run into. Off the road, you'll probably start running into hostile wildlife. My advice would be to stick to the highway when you can. Not in good springs, no. But if you're up for a little scavenging, there's always the schoolhouse. Most of what's in there is junk, but there's this old safe that even Easy Pete wasn't able to crack with dynamite. If you want to take a shot at it, take these. If the lock's too much for you to handle, reading through the magazine might give you the edge you need. You'll need those to pick the lock. Be careful, though. Put too much pressure on them, and they'll snap. Oh. Well, go ahead and keep the stuff I gave you anyway. It'll be more useful to you than me. I hunt geckos, mostly. The meat's pretty good, and I can always find a buyer for the hides. I also help keep the town clear of rad scorpions and coyotes. Not many people live in good springs, so wildlife is always creeping in. Sure, what do you want to know? Southeast of here is Prim. Can't miss it. Since it has the giant old roller coaster right in the middle of town, the NCR's got an outpost there. If you follow the road north, you'll eventually hit Sloan and Quarry Junction. They mine rocks or something, but I heard they got troubles lately. I wouldn't head that direction if I were you, though. Got critters up there that don't take kindly to getting shot. The new California Republic. Bunch of settlers and soldiers coming in from the west, fixing on making Nevada their own. They can be right pushy, but the roads are safer because of them, so I tend to let it go. Not that I got a choice. Just taking the time is all. Yeah, we should have time to finish up things in Good Springs. Well, the wildlife for one thing, rowdy locals for another. <laughs> They're protecting their own. Just happens to help us. They've been holding off this other group from the east, too. Got a funny name. Call themselves Caesar's Legion. Never seen them in these parts, so I couldn't tell you much. I hear rumors, that's about it. Supposedly, they keep slaves and they got some real nasty ways of killing folks. But maybe that's just something folks in the NCR cooked up to make themselves seem more useful here. Less uninvited. Around here, mostly coyotes and geckos. The coyotes are pretty dangerous in large packs, but otherwise they're nothing to really worry about. The geckos aren't too tough, but they've got a nasty bite. I've heard about bigger, nastier versions out in the wasteland, but I've never seen them. Stick to the roads when you can, and steer clear of the hills north of Good Springs. The critters up there are big and poisonous. If you want to know anything else, just ask. I'll be waiting. So, similarly to this, it's like you can join the powder gangers. Uh, so you're have... planning on taking on Joe Cobb's gang. It's a big risk, but I suppose you have to do what you think is right. Um, you could join the Powder Gangers and then convince some NPCs to help you out and things like that, so... Yeah. So we can use speech to say, hmm. Yeah, should be lots of fun. Or... Stage an ambush, if I had the help. I was planning on sitting this one out, but for some reason, 
I can't help but like you. I'm with you. Let me have a word with a few other folks, and I'll see if I can't round up some more members for this militia you're creating. While everyone does own a gun, we could stand to be a little better equipped. The general store probably has what we need in stock. Oof, seven mangan revolver there. Nice. Uh Think a few of those. Hey. hey. Howdy. Bad trouble. Welcome. <laughs> Too dangerous. Gonna kill all yourselves if I let you touch it. Better to leave it buried. Safer that way. Uh huh. Guess you know what you're doing. I'll go dig it up and get it ready. You'll have it by the time the fighting starts. Yup. You must be the one Doc Mitchell was patching up. The way I heard it, I didn't think you'd be walking out of that office. I've got plenty of supplies for sale. Even got some weapon mods and special ammo. Well worth the caps if you ask me. If you're hurting for caps, I've also got boxes of surplus ammo in the miscellaneous section. They're not great, but you get what you pay for. Weapon mods are things like silencers, scopes, bigger magazines. Special ammo includes things like armor-piercing bullets, which don't hurt the target as much, but let you punch through armor easier. There's also hollow-point bullets, which have the opposite effect. You can kill unarmored targets easier, but they don't do shit against armor. It's all about quantity over quality. Trouble is, you'll be cleaning and fixing your gun a lot more than usual when you use those kind of bullets. If Ringo doesn't head out on his own, I think we should hand him over. The town shouldn't get itself mixed into the problem. Don't mistake that for coward talk, though. We're a town of survivors. We'll fight tooth and nail if pushed, but we don't go looking for trouble. The leader was a New Vegas type. Typical city boy. He had a bunch of great cons with him, probably hired guns. The great cons normally stay in their own territory way up northwest, on account of them being enemies with the NCR. Now just hold on. I never voted to take on the Powder Gangers. That's a thousand cap investment you're talking about. You made your point. I can provide people with some leather armor and extra ammo. Sure hope it's worth it. And uh, I'll be guarding the store while all this is going on. I have to put my business first. You understand. They're tough sons of bitches. Mean, but not crazy. They'll leave you alone unless you got something they want. The Great Khans deal in illegal chems. There's a good chance that most chems you come across were made by Great Khans. Twice. Both times I drank a lot of liquor and lost most of my caps at the card tables. In that order, now that I think about it. If you ever get to New Vegas, be sure to visit Gamora. It's the best casino in the city. You won't regret it. Word of advice. Behave. Between the NCR military police and Mr. House's robots, you don't want to be causing trouble on the strip. I'm afraid I don't know much myself. Mr. House has got his own casino, Lucky 38, but nobody goes in or out except his robots. The other casinos follow Mr. House's rules, so I guess that makes him the leader of New Vegas. As far as I know, nobody's ever laid eyes on the guy. I think that robot who pulled you out of the dirt belongs to Mr. House. If Mr. House is looking after you, it's got to be a good thing, right? Take it easy now. Look. 
So already we're seeing Doc Mitchell sure knows his stuff, doesn't he? Characters in other armor. Let's go see the good doctor. Welcome back. I had hoped you wouldn't need to come see me again so soon. What can I do for you? Seems like wherever I go, it's always the same. Folks just never leave each other alone. Oh, I'm not much good in a fight with my bum leg. And my supplies are scarce. But I'll give you what I can spare. I ain't got much, but it'll do you more good out there than I will in here. Take what I got. Well, I already told you I came from a vault. After that, I was a traveling doctor for a spell. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Most folks out here ain't educated, so people with medical know-how are hard to come by. I found that I could help a lot of people with what I knew, and that was all right with me. Eventually, I went back and married my childhood sweetheart, and that was the end of my traveling days. Didn't miss it none then. Still don't. Well, ain't we all, right? That was a long time ago. I don't pay it much mind anymore. Uh, this here's Good Springs, named after the water we got here, just down the road to the southeast. Good Springs Source, they call it. It's a quiet town, and that's how we like it. We don't go looking for trouble, though occasionally it sees fit to come looking for us. Well, there's a general store just up the road, run by a fella named Chet. He don't got nothing fancy, but he's got your basics covered. If you're looking to wet your whistle, just past Chet's is the Prospector Saloon. The bartender there, Trudy, knows everyone in town. Other than that, there's not much to see. Just people trying to scratch out a living. That'd be Victor. Curious fella. He's sort of odd, and I don't just mean because he's a robot. I couldn't tell you much about him. He's real friendly, don't get wrong. You just get the sense that that ain't the whole picture. Just a feeling. He keeps to himself, mostly. You want to know more about him, you'll have to ask him yourself. He has a shack on the southern edge of town. I just realized my head's in the way of the text, so sometimes, so... Yeah, so I apologize if it gets a bit disruptive. I will probably move the camera about a bit. I didn't see him or the men with him. You might ask around town, though. Could be someone saw which way they was headed. Your best bet would probably be Trudy, the bartender at the saloon up the road. If anyone saw anything, she'd know about it. You take care now. If you can repair this, you can get this I'm the medicine machine. This has a chemistry set as well. You can create some drugs, you can create stim packs. So we have five stim packs. So this is like a it's a really good starter zone because you get to know how your skills can be used. And you are absolutely rewarded for it as well. So yeah. You may have seen a lot of pre-war books as well. We don't need them in this game. That's a habit you're going to have to, uh, I guess, unlearn. I was like, oh, there's all these free wall books and I can't use any of them. But they don't mean shit in this game. So, yeah.
Hello there. It's good to see a friendly face. I almost took you for a raider, I did. Name's Malcolm. Malcolm Holmes. Don't suppose you'd care to trade. I'm missing a few essentials and... Ah, oh, screw this. Lying just ain't in my nature. I'll tell it to you straight. I've been following you for a good bit now. It started off innocently enough. I was traveling, as I often do, and happened to observe you picking up one of those blue star caps. You didn't show any reaction to it, so I figured you didn't know what you'd gotten your hands on. There's an old wasteland legend that says somewhere out there is a fabulous treasure from before the war. Those caps with the blue star on them, the tale goes, are the key to that treasure. They're called Sunset Sarsaparilla Stars. All over the place. The easiest place to find them is unopened bottles of Sunset Sarsaparilla. You'd think they'd all have been picked clean by now, but somehow, new bottles keep appearing in the machines. Some say it's old Festus that does it, hoping someone will finally collect enough caps to earn the treasure. Other than bottles, you'll just have to scavenge. You can find caps in the unlikeliest of places, and Blue Star caps are no exception. It's said that the treasure is guarded by a man named Festus, and he's the one who asked for the Blue Star caps. It's also said he's been around since the war, standing a lonely vigil, waiting for someone to come and take the treasure off his hands. That'll make him pretty damn old, but I've met a few people in my travels who claim they actually met him, and they weren't the lying type either. Nah, I gave it up years ago. Too dangerous. And even if I did still collect them, I'd tell you the same. There's people out there so mad with the idea of treasure that they'll attack strangers just on the suspicion that they have some of those caps. No one knows. Money, weapons, water. It is, or maybe was, something of value, and that's enough to get people motivated. No problem. If you do end up trying to collect more stars, watch out for a man named Alan Marks. He's killed several people for their stars already. Hmm. Huh? You want to talk some more? There's not much more to tell. Get enough stars and the treasure's yours. Just watch out for some of the other people collecting them. Oh, that's right. Here, let me show you what I've got on hand. Pleasure doing business with you. No problem. If you so, put even more of these things. I suppose I'll put some fun. Hmm, right. Sunsets. So we now have seven of them. I think we need about fifty. The more of those you get, or the more sunsets or sprillers you drink for the bottle caps, the less likely you are to actually get some. So, yeah, so you kind of have to like. So what's going on? Did keep Sonny agree drinking. to help us? Well, I guess that means we're ready to go. Unless you think there's something else you can do. All right, I'm ready. I hope. Time to look alive. The Powder Gangers are here to play. At least six, Joe Cobb included. They look pretty mean. Oh, Easy P came through with the dynamite. Here's your supply. I really hope I don't blow myself up. I'll be set up near the store. Let's hope that the gang doesn't manage to make it that far. Okay. Power gangers have come to town.
so we can vilify it by the power I'll games. I'll you a huge favor for this. Here, these are technically Crimson Caravan funds, but I know they'll understand once I explain things. I'll stick around for a bit longer, but I'll be gone in a few days. If you ever visit New Vegas, look me up at the Crimson Caravan camp. Thanks again for all your help. It's a two-player game, and the winner takes the whole pie. You build a caravan using the cards in your deck. The goal is to create caravan bids that beat your opponent's bids. So there's more strategy than luck involved. It's why you won't see caravan in any casino. Too slow-paced. And more importantly, no house edge. Here, take this holotape. It goes into more specifics about the rules. You'll also need a deck, so take one of my spares. So, you feel like playing a game? Well, why not? Let's figure out how to play. Just keep an eye out for him while you travel. I found cards in old boxes or forgotten on shelves. You can find some for sale, too. Don't worry. I'm not that good of a player. Okay. Some caps, and you'll notice, well, like, we've also got coins and dollars as well. These are the, um, uh, new California Republic dollars. They have paper money. Uh, and I think this is Tanya, President Tanya. I couldn't tell you who this is here. So. Play caravan. No idea what the rules are. Three. Five. Six. Uh. Six. Ace. Swap cars, how do I go further up out of that? Sure. I really must read the rules before I actually start playing because I have no idea what I'm doing. The idea is to have like Boneyard, Dayglow, Reading, New Reno, Shady Sands, and the Hob. <laughs> it's all locations in Fallout. I think the idea is that you're meant to have like the most.
cards. Each of those. Okay. I will honestly learn how to play this and then this will be. In fact, you know. No one's a fold. <laughs> so. So that's the rules. Um, oh, by the way, these are our instructions that were given. So when we came to New Vegas, we just got a job as a courier. It's love the package at the north entrance to the New Vegas Strip. By the way, a free start. An agent of the recipient will meet you at the checkpoint, take possession of the package, and pay for the delivery. Bring the payment to Johnson Nash at the Bravo Express Agency in Prom. Bonus on completion 250 caps. This package contains one, one oversized Pokemon Platinum Chip. But uh, Pokemon Chip composed of Platinum. Oh, drop penalties. You are an authorized agent of the Mojave Express package until the delivery is complete and payment has been processed. Congratulate, contractually obli obligated to complete this transaction and materially responsible for any malfeasance or loss. Being able to deliver the proper recipient may res to the proper recipient may result in forfeiture of your advance and bonus criminal charges and or pursuit by mercenary reclamation teams. The Pahave Express is not responsible for any injury or loss of life you experience as a result of said reclamation efforts. So... Do I have trails to do on those when I was that way? So yeah, I don't think we suffered any casualties. That'll teach the powder gangs to avoid good springs in the future. So, let's have a look at our reputation now. So, we are idolized in good springs, the highest reputation you can get, and vilified by the powder gangers. So, the powder gangers don't like us very much because we've you know, killed everyone. I really need all that. I can tell their fingers, that's good. So, yeah, so obviously, evil. Cowboy hat. So I will that on. There we go. And I'm now dressed as powder. So that allows me to walk into like powder ganger bases. That Doc Mitchell sure knows his stuff, doesn't it? And uh, yeah, be disguised as them. I'm glad that business is over. I like it when Good Springs is nice and quiet. Be careful out there. So we'll keep this on. Howdy. As we make our way now to the city, oh, it's the small town of Prim. So, so, as a bit of a recap between the video, we have come from the Capital Wasteland, we've been in the Mojave for three years, we've been working for a company called the Mojave Express, and we have been, we were tasked with delivering a package, a platinum poker chip. We were ambushed and shot in the head by a man named Benny. And we're looking after him. 
and we want to get our revenge. And uh, we already have one piece of our brain removed from our skull. We don't particularly want another one. So, we're going to go and search for him. We're going to kill him. I think we're going to find out just what else he needed. That chip. In the meantime, we're also going to have to navigate. The the uh, choppy waters of the NCR, the New California Republic, and. Caesar's or Caesar's legion. Oh, who do we have here? Powder pack gang us. You eyeballing me? You eyeballing me? Never gets old when something blows up. So yeah, there's a powder gang. So they were the ones that were terrorizing the town. But because I'm dressed as one. I am somewhat safe from them. If I were to tell the disguise off, they'd immediately attack. Yeah, they got some mines around. Powder gang of notes. Not many patrols out here lately, which means not much loot. Our crew was thinking we should make a move soon. Probably track something north, head toward the strip. You in? Ain't on the chain gang anymore. But we should still stick together. You eyeballing me? Any lawman that comes after me won't have it easy. And see our triple helmet powder charge. We have some Kevlar as well. Any lawman that comes after me won't have it easy. And that's Prim over there. So, actually, let me have a look. Where do I want to go next? Do I really want to go to Prim, or do I want to go to... That's a camp. Yeah. Let's go to prison. Just make sure that the uh, powder gangers are dealt with for good. Of course we could barge in there, but um, there are better ways of doing things. Any lawman that comes after me won't have it easy. So, yeah. So I'll just show you where we're going, and then I will pause and quit. This is where we're going next. So thank you all for watching. I hope this has been a good first part. Uh, more parts will follow. 
uh, obviously. But um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy it. And uh, I look forward to talking more about the world of Fallout and as well my favourite developer, or one of my favourite developers, Obsidian Attempt. Take care. Ta-ta for now.